start winning at the races with Daily Racing Form's new Mobile Pass performances, featuring exclusive buyer speed figures and expert analysis and selections. Go to drf.com slash best and get the power of DRF in the palm of your hand. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Belmont Park on a stakes-packed Saturday afternoon card is the grade two True North Stakes. Let's take a look at the field. We're going six and a half furlongs for some nice sprinters. The seven promises fulfilled is the seven to five morning line favorite, making his first start since the Keeneland fall meet. He missed some time with some ankle surgery. When he's right, Mike, he's very fast out of the gate. He certainly is. I mean, you would expect if he's ready off the layoff, Dan, and he's still, you know, the horse that uh, that he once was, you would expect him to just come out of there running and try to make the lead in here. Personally, I think the eight Forense fire will go off favorite at post time. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector promises fulfilled the seven expected to make the lead. It'll be interesting to see how Yorkton plays the break because he's a horse that likes to be forward. And as for Forense fire, the connections have to be very pleased that they draw outside. They like to keep the source in the clear and away from traffic. Yeah, it, it's a great post position for him, and he's back relatively quickly um, off of his uh, first start for Kelly Breen. And we'll see if he can just take a little step forward because he did not run well in his first start for his new trainer. Let's begin with the one Diamond King, multiple stakes winner. He took the stymie going a one-turn mile, two starts back. And I understand what the connections were doing last time out at Churchill Downs. If you're going to try a horse like Owendale, you're going to do it going a one-turn mile, catching that horse off of a layoff. And Diamond King bobbled a little bit at the start, got caught up in an early pace battle, and paid the price. He's just not as good a horse as Owendale is. This company is more to his liking, and we've always liked him at shorter distances. But do you think the six and a half is actually a little sharp i mean i'm just gonna say that i prefer him uh sprinting or up to a one-turn mile so i'm not gonna worry about distance with him in this race i guess you know the question will just be you know what kind of triple he get from the rail because he he's not fast enough it doesn't seem like to make the lead in this race and then i guess the bigger question would be if the two outside horses show up can he beat them i i don't know if he can um i also don't know if those two horses on the outside are as good as they once were so it gives this horse a chance Midnight Charlie, the number two, is admirably consistent. 12 of 15 in the exact in his career. Multiple stakes placed, but no match for Forenze Fire the last time they met in the fabulous strike at Penn National. That race was in November, so we're dealing with a seven-month layoff against some tough horses. Yeah, I mean, so far, he's just not good enough, I don't think, to win this race, Dan. Um, he is more of a closing type. There could be a fast pace in here, and that would help him. Trainer Linda Rice did a remarkable job with the three Wicked Trick last year, claiming this source for $16,000. Wicked Trick immediately reeled off four victories, one of them of the triple-digit buyer variety. And last time out in the stymie, maybe he was stymie just a little bit by a lack of pace up front. He was last turning into the stretch wide and flattened out just a little bit. Uh, he is six for nine on dirt, uh, and he's going to be kicking late in this race. I think he will, too. Um, I wasn't convinced that he was good enough to win this. I will say it is stymie last time. He did get sort of stalled behind a horse around the turn there. It, you know, sort of broke his momentum a little bit. Then he flattened out in the stretch. Uh, he was also the favorite in that race. I thought his dirt form is actually pretty good since I switched him over. I just don't know if I think he's a stakes horse, Dan. Wait for it. The number four is cutting back in distance, and it could work well for him. The last time he sprinted was all the way back, five back, October the 29th, and he ran okay with a little bit of trouble. Thought he had a decent trip, two back at Parks, where he tried to shoot up the rail. Was no match for the Inform Senior Investment. And last time out, going a mile and an eighth, he got right up close to that slow pace, albeit being a little bit wide, and just didn't finish with the same verve. The sixth horse come out of that race to finish third in the Westchester with a 91 buyer he has figs i'm not sure he's classy enough to win i felt the same way about him i respect that he's run some you know relatively fast races recently i'm not sure if he's good enough to win that i'm not sure that he's really a sprinter either 
Despite being a dirt maiden, Yorkton has yet to win on dirt. He's done some very good work on synthetic and turf in Canada in his career. He did some good things down at Gulfstream Park on the main track this winter. Second in the Sir Shackleton Stakes behind Vacoma, who came back and just freaked out in the Carter. And then this race, last time out, where Yorkton showed good early speed, battled on the pace. He turns into the stretch and it, it takes him a long time to put away his pace challenger, the six rare form to his inside. And that gives Global Campaign a chance to come get him. A good effort for Yorkton going seven, and I like him cutting back to six and a half. It'll be interesting if Dylan Davis uses his speed. I agree that shorter is better for him. Um, I don't know if he's fast enough uh, to go with Promises Fulfilled early, Dan. Again, I don't also don't know if Promises Fulfilled is the same horse he once was. But um, if he is, I just felt like Yorkton could be in a really tough spot here. For a horse who's never won a race on dirt, um, he's just not my kind of horse. Stan the man's a kind of horse that he's good on fast dirt, but you have to move him up on a wet track because he's capable of getting into the triple digit stratosphere over wet going. A win in the Queens County on fast going three back going a mile and an eighth was a good effort where he just sat right off the pace under a confident ride and was able to hold off Adventist late. Uh, I like him going one turn. I wonder if this race is a bit short for him and his last two haven't been very good. Uh, yeah, th that was more my concern, just that his you know last couple of races just aren't really that good. And that bothers me about him because overall, Dan, he's a horse who's you know very versatile in terms of distance. He's adaptable to different pace scenarios. He could get a good trip in this race. As you mentioned, there are a couple of fast races on his card. I mean, there are really some things to like about this horse who's going to be a price. Promises Fulfilled was one of the better three-year-old sprinters in 2018. He won the signature race for three-year-old sprinters, the H. Allen Jerkins at Saratoga. And while he was a graded stakes winner last year, I think some folks would look at his four-year-old at his uh, four -year -old campaign as a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, the forego, you could argue he was on a deep and tiring rail, and maybe that worked against him. And I think you could also make that argument last time out in the Phoenix, where he was battling inside, and he just seemed like he was on the deeper footing if you don't believe that the rail was bad both days well he wasn't very good in either of those races especially the phoenix where a million to one shot had his number after about five sixteenths of a mile yeah i was one of the people who just didn't think he was as good as a four-year-old um, as he was as a five-year-old and i say that realizing that he earned a career best 108 buyer when he won the neighborhood over this track last summer and he did listen you know, at the end of the day, he did have some excuses in some of those races, you know, squaring off against Matole three different times. Um, I just didn't think he was as good last year, and that sort of bothers me. But he does come back fresh, off a layoff, looking like the speed in a true north that did not come up that strong. Um, so I understand why he's probably going to be a short price in this race. Again, he had ankle surgery over the winter. He has been working very swiftly for Dale Romans, and you know he's going to be forwardly placed. I don't think he's as bad as he looked in the Forgo in the Phoenix. I don't think he's as good as he looked in the Nehru. That 108 buyer I thought was dressed up. There was no pace in the race. He was able to control it from start to finish. But promise is fulfilled on his best day. He's going to be tough. But I think if Forense Fire shows up with his best, He's the horse to beat now for Kelly Breen, and he did not fire in the Carter handicap last time out. Maybe it was the sloppy track. Maybe he didn't like breaking from the inside post. But I think a lot of folks are going to say this horse was trained by the controversial Jason Service. He showed up flat first time for Kelly Breen, and who knows what we're going to get. Yeah, I mean, that's the big concern that I have. And I, I certainly realized that a sloppy track could be an excuse for him last time as well, but he just didn't look like the same horse um, if you um, ran this race back to last year and told me I had to pick between Forenze Fire and Promises Fulfilled, I wouldn't hesitate, Dan. I would have taken Forenze Fire. I just thought he was the better horse last year. I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. Well, now I would agree with that statement 100%, but as we take a look at our selections here, it might be a completely different tale. We believe that Dale Romans will have promises fulfilled, ready to rumble. First off of the layoff, he's going to have to do a lot better than he did in his last two starts last year. Promises fulfilled, though, our top selection in this race. Mike, you're going 7, 8, 1, and 3. Yeah, listen, ultimately, um, when I first went through this race, I wasn't thrilled with either of the two favorites um, here. I thought that they could be vulnerable, and maybe that still is the case, Dan. I, you know, at the end of the day, I couldn't find the alternative that I wanted to take against them. 
It'll be very interesting to see what we get from Forense Fire in the grade two True North. Promises fulfilled. Fresh off the layoff for Dale Romans is our top selection. Approximate post time for race nine at Belmont on Saturday, 536 Eastern. Best of luck.